Hello, and welcome to Journeys in Faith on the Anne DeSantis YouTube channel. It is wonderful to be here with all of you on this Friday evening. As you can see, I have a great guest that has been on the show before. I have Anthony Kalink, otherwise known as Tony. Uh, it is so great to have you again on Journeys in Faith. Thank you so much for having me, Anne. It's a pleasure being back. Yes. And as you all know, those who watch the show on a regular basis, the, the program is called Journeys in Faith. So we always start out with that faith journey of my guest. And I'd like to start out with his bio and read this great paragraph that gives you an idea of who Tony is. Anthony Barone Kalink, otherwise known as Tony, is the author of six novels for teens, including his latest release, Penny and the Stolen Chalice, and his teen historical fiction series, The Harwood Mysteries which has won over a dozen book awards. He is also a columnist for Practical Homeschooling Magazine and the host of the Shepherd's Pie radio show, which I've been a guest on, and I'm so grateful. And, and he, he is a retired as a Lieutenant Colonel from the U.S. Air Force Judge Advocate General's Corp after 21 years of military service. He currently teaches law at Ave Maria School of Law and he speaks at writing, legal, and homeschooling events. Tony and his family live in Florida. Now, I also want to mention that he has his latest release. This one is called Penny and the Stolen Chalice. And we are going to talk a lot about that book right after Tony gives us a little bit of a taste of his faith journey. So please do share with us a little bit about you and how you developed a deep faith and got into what you're doing right now. Well, you know, like probably like many of us, uh, my journey has has not been a straight line of, you know, perfection. It's been very crooked throughout my life. Uh, I grew up Catholic up in New Jersey. I went to Catholic school for elementary and secondary school. Actually, I was at an all boys uh, high school, Don Bosco Technical High School in Patterson, New Jersey uh, for my high school years. And, you know, I wasn't a bad kid, I, you know, I, I, I think I was, if anything, maybe a little unusually attuned to, you know, church and, and this kind of thing, especially as a teenager, got involved with youth groups and this kind of thing. Um, but, you know, it's like I said, at different times in my life, I've sort of strayed uh, where I shouldn't have uh, gone. Probably one of the uh, earlier versions of that was... Uh, you know, as a as a teenager, actually, my now wife um, and I were a teen pregnancy. So we just got I just got back from the March for Life a few weeks ago from D.C., uh, which is a cause very near and dear to our hearts because, you know, we were a, we, a crisis uh, pregnancy ourselves. Um, thankfully, uh, my wife uh, chose to have our eldest daughter and we now have five kids and, and three grandkids. And none of that would have happened, obviously, if, if we hadn't chosen life. But it you know, in, in hindsight, it seems a lot clearer than at the time when you're a teenager going through that kind of a, a situation. Um, we actually, um, you know, uh, again, we weren't bad kids. We just kind of went off uh, on a different path as teenagers uh, in high school there. And we wound up leaving the Catholic Church for a few years and I became a, a Protestant, uh, born again Christian, non-denominational kind of a Protestant and didn't I didn't fully appreciate what my Catholic faith was about until I met a very faithful Catholic who I was working with. And I thought I was going to convert him, you know, take him away from the Catholic Church. And he wound up bringing me back uh, home, really by introducing me to, you know, the Apostolic Fathers and just church history and, uh, and, and, and the Mass and the Eucharist and what it's really about. Even though I'd gone to church my whole life, I don't think I'd really appreciated what it was really about and uh, that's about the time when uh, i wound up joining the air force and spent 21 years in on a pretty long and amazing journey that the air force was so good to me god you know has been good to me uh, so much throughout our lives and you know i wish i could say i was always uh, on the straight and narrow but you know uh, like so many of us i think uh, God needs to call us back to repentance, and uh, and that's been throughout my life too. But uh, now I'm I'm teaching at Ave Maria School of Law in Naples, uh, really enjoying that. And uh, I taught at law schools, you know, for about ten years after I got out of uh, the Air Force in 2012. 
Uh, and I've been writing, uh, writing for teens, you know, really historical and, and inspirational fiction with a, a, usually a lot of religious themes or at least kind of vibes organically in the in the storylines. And I like to try to bring some of the faith lessons I think I've learned throughout my life from my own screw ups um, into my writing and also kind of something that I I would like you know, my kids are all grown up now. My youngest actually graduated college last year. Um, but, you know, when I started writing for kids, I, you know, I wanted to write the type of fiction that would be interesting to them and would also be, be able to, you know, keep them um, on the right path in their own lives, you know, having kind of strayed off of it myself uh, so many times. Thank you so much for sharing. I have to admit, you've been a guest at least once. And every time you come on the program, I learn something new, like what you shared about, you know, the, the your pro the pro life aspect of your late teen years. Uh, they yeah. were that's a story that I didn't know. And so thank you for sharing. I think that uh, makes a good impact on all of us who are watching, you know, knowing that, as you said, I think we're all on a journey of constant conversion, aren't we? Whether we're young, old, somewhere in the middle. Yeah. So I, I thank you so much for sharing on that and on, on the wonderful work that you're doing too. Now, one of the purposes of you being on this show is that you did want to share with our audience your new book. And as I mentioned, the name of that book is Penny and the Stolen Chalice. Um, I would like to read that uh, by, the little bio that you have about the book. Uh, Penny is a new sixth grader at a Catholic school, but she isn't Catholic. So when the chalice is stolen from the altar during a school mass, she doesn't really understand what the big deal is. Penny decides to team up with her friend Jaden to find the thief and recover the chalice. As she finds clues, Penny, along with the reader, gains a deep, deeper understanding of the mass and the chalice's place in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Now, we're going to be taking a break in maybe five minutes or so, but I would like you to at least give them like a little teaser because we're, when we come back from the break, of course, we'll talk a lot more, not only about this book, but about all of your other books too. But tell us about this book. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. This is a new release coming out March 4th, 2024, just in time, you know, for it to be uh, during Lent. And uh, this is an Our Sunday Visitor um, book, different than other uh, you know, middle grade novels that our Sunday visitor has done. And so it's exciting to be writing for them. They're a great uh, Catholic publisher. And they wanted uh, to do a book that was going to be for kids for the Eucharistic renewal in 2024. And a story that would kind of have a lot of the, uh, you know, typical, I like to write mystery, you know, novels for kids, really, for teens and middle grade. And this is definitely more of a younger uh, audience, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth grade. Um, but I'm, I'm actually thinking that even second and third graders who are good readers might actually, this might be a great book um, for like First Communion, frankly, because they wanted to have a story that would highlight the Eucharist and help, you know, kids learn about the Mass, but not in a way that would seem like, you know, you're teaching kids about the Mass. And uh, and so I, you know, I, I feel, you know, very blessed to uh, the storyline kind of came to me in a, in a way. And I thought, well, what would be what would be awesome is if you could put it in a, a modern Catholic school and we don't have to make our main character Catholic because so many of our Catholic schools do have non-Catholic kids in them um, these days. But that would also allow, you know, uh, the protagonist Penny here who's a sixth grade girl. And, and the story is written in first person from her you know, point of view, uh, which was a lot of fun for me to be, be a sixth grade girl for a while. Um, but essentially she, you know, has to learn about, you know, what happens. So, so they're at mass at the school mass and somebody pulls the fire alarm. Everybody evacuates the church. And while the church is evacuated, somebody takes the chalice off the altar, but uh, it hasn't been cleaned yet. So it still has traces of the Eucharist, uh, you know, wine in the chalice when it's stolen. And so that becomes sort of like the premise of the whole uh, novel. And her and her friend, Jaden, who was an altar serving uh, at the time when it was stolen and is a, a suspect, like maybe he stole this chalice, um, you know, together they have to try to figure this out. And along the way, she's 
kind of you know learning that the the mass and the eucharist are what are actually going to be crucial to her to figure out why would anybody steal a chalice from an altar and uh and there's a lot of really cool stuff going on in the background in her life too her father had died so she's you know with her mom and her little brother and so there's there's definitely um kind of a, a another story going on in her family uh, behind the scenes uh, as the mystery is being solved but there's a lot of fun there's a, there's a lot of fun in it there's a lot of mystery in it and there's this you know her own journey to understand why the eucharist is so important why the chalice was so important and uh, I've really felt like OSV did such a nice job pulling this together. Um, you know, I don't have the cover in front of me. I, I don't know if your, uh, your viewers will be able to see the cover image, but they, they did such a nice job of capturing the vibe of this book with the uh, cover of the book too. Yeah, I mean, I'm impressed with, I'm always impressed with everything that you do. You sent me the cover and yes, it's, it's really um, very colorful and, it's something that catches one's eye. Now, tell us again, what would you say the age group is for the book? So I wrote it really for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. But as you know, like our kids, like I gave a talk at a middle school uh, a few weeks ago, and a uh, girl told me she read the whole Harry Potter series when she was in second grade. Well, you know, if you, a second grader can read the entire Harry Potter series, a second reader can read this book because it's it's definitely written um, as a chapter book with sort of that fourth, fifth grade, you know, a kid in mind. Um, whereas my other fiction we'll talk about after the break is is more kind of got a slightly uh, higher audience, you know, uh, in age than that. Yes, it. I like the way that you really keep in mind when you when you're doing your writing you you do keep in mind who you, your audience is you have sent me some of your books and i'm i really treasure them and i thank you for doing that <laughs> that was a great thing thank you. um now where's the best place for them to purchase the book obviously you said it's from osv and um but where would they would would it be their website or what amazon yeah. what's the best place? I mean, it, it's available for pre-order now both on osv and on places like amazon and barnes and noble um, what i always like to say when i get this question is go to your local catholic bookstore if you've got the time like if it's not an emergency purchase for a gift or something go and request the book let them know that it exists you know get that get it on their shelves too and give your business to that mom and pop you know, store that's being crushed by Amazon right now. And so um, I, I would like to say that would be the first place I'd go. But I know we, we all shop online. And if you're going to shop online, um, you know, either OSV or Amazon is probably a good place to get it. Great. Thank you so much. Now, we will take a, just a really short break. We'll be right back. And when we come back, we'll continue this discussion. But we'll also took a talk about some of your other books. Be right back. Thank you so much for joining us on this Friday evening on the Anda Santa's YouTube channel for the Journeys in Faith program with my guest, Tony Kolink. And right before we watched that short commercial there, uh, we were talking about his newest book, which is Penny and the Stolen Chalice. So is there anything else you want to share about the book to our audience? I mean, I know that 
That's really the newest release. This show is being aired on March 1st, and I think you told me that the release is, it is this month. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's just a great book. I mean, you know, you know, parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, they're always looking for good gifts for like middle school kids. And there's so much trash out there to read these days, um, you know, to watch. Uh, and, you know, we always want to encourage, you know, kids to read. But reading something like this, I think, is, you know, the reason I, I'm a writer, frankly, is, you know, we were a homeschooling family and we wanted, you know, there to be good things to buy for our kids. And so, you know, I have that kind of, of idea in mind when I write. And this uh, this book in particular, it's a standalone mystery. I don't know that I'll ever write another Penny uh, book, but, you know, e even if it's the only one, it does exactly what I wanted it to do, which is really just have a, a fun adventure mystery kind of in a, in a contemporary setting but also introduce all these other themes so i would really say take a look at this if, when you're looking for a gift for like a middle schooler and even again i think i think a a good reading second grader getting first communion this would really be i think an awesome uh, gift for that person too thank you so much now i believe the last time we had a program where i interviewed you you were talking about the harwood mysteries which is your series and in October 2023 was book five, Murder at Penwood Manor. I'd like to read the, the description. It's Zan and Christina embark on a journey to Harwood Abbey, where they reunite with their old friends, Lucy and Joshua. When a brutal murder occurs at nearby Penwood Manor, all evidence points to Lawrence, a crusader recently returned from the Holy Land. Unconvinced of the man's guilt, Zan and his friends must act swiftly to solve the crime. Who could have committed such a horrible killing? And is anyone safe? Is Lawrence tormented by demons or is he haunted by some other secret? And will Zan be forever changed by the choice Lucy and Christina presented to him? Good questions. So let's talk about that. First of all, what is the, what was the inspiration for this book? Yeah, so in this one, I do have a copy of, I could show you the cover right here. Uh, this is the Loyola Press series. I've got, um, there's going to be six books in the Harwood Mysteries. Book five just released in October of 23. Book six, the final one, will come out in October of 24. And I, I you know, the manuscript, I just got done with the final, you know, edits on that uh, with Loyola Press. And they have done such an amazing job. So this the Harwood Mystery Series, uh, for those who might not have heard about it, uh, is it's set in 12th century England. It's really like a historical fiction series. There are, there are historical events that are going on in the background, but it follows my main character, Zan Alexander, who is a uh, actually an orphaned peasant boy in uh, Yorkshire, England, when the series starts in Shadow in the Dark, which is book one, Shadow in the Dark. And that's where he meets Lucy, who's a, a girl who's at, at this abbey, uh, this Benedictine monastery, essentially. And book one, you know, really helped introduce the readers to the Middle Ages, to, you know, 12th century England, to monastic life, feudalism, and all those concepts. Because Zan and Lucy have to solve this kind of spooky mystery on the abbey grounds of Harwood Abbey, hence Harwood Mysteries. And then uh, book two, uh, The Haunted Cathedral, takes place about a year later. So when the series starts, there are like 11. So book two, there are like 12. And they uh, travel to Lincoln, England, which is a, a few days journey from the uh, Abbey. And they have to solve sort of this ghost mystery in, in this cathedral, actually a historical cathedral. And there's some really cool history about the uh, Lincoln Cathedral in that book. Um, and that book's about forgiveness, actually. And then the third book in that series was Fire of Eden. That was sort of my jewel thief um, novel. Kind of each book has, a, you know, kind of its own unique mystery to solve. Um, and that book really is about pride. Um, and then book four is The Merchant's Curse uh, back in Lincoln. Uh, that one takes place. That one's kind of a witch, uh, kind of a witch cursing kind of a book. Mm -hmm. um, I should say here that that all of these books are entirely Christian, uh, with no uh, inappropriate occult, you know, messages. Um, 
but some of them do deal with spooky. You know, the series vibe is supposed to be spooky, but they've all won awards from the Catholic Media Association, the Association of Catholic Publishers, um, other Christian organizations. So there's nothing inappropriate for kids, although it definitely um, does kind of have a little bit of that um, almost supernatural vibe to the series, but that's meant as a way to keep the action and enticement and mystery there for our, our young readers. Um, anyway, so Mer The Merchant's Curse is book four, and then book five is my murder mystery. So this was my homage to you know, Agatha Christie, I, you know, grew up reading a lot of Agatha Christie murder mysteries. So I said, you know, I'd love to write a murder mystery in this series. And that's what happens. And, um, you know, at this time in England, there's so many cool things going on in history. But one of the really interesting things is the Third Crusade is about to kick off like the year after book five. And in fact, book six is going to put my characters essentially on their way towards the Holy Land for uh, as this third crusade is kicking off. But uh, the, the suspect that you mentioned, uh, Lawrence, uh, is actually a crusader who's returned from the Holy Land. And this is the same year that Jerusalem falls to Saladin and the Muslims in 1187. And so that's kind of the historical backdrop of what's going on in in the background. So we get introduced to this crusader, you know, to what's going on with the crusades. and And then we have to figure out who actually committed the murder. And so, you know, you could see each book has kind of got its own kind of spooky, different twist, but they're all sort of with history and, and religious themes sort of in the background. Yeah, you do a good, a good job of interweaving all of that information and also keeping their attention and, and really using their critical thinking skills too. I would think that that's probably one of your goals, if I'm correct. Yeah, I mean, it, they are mysteries. And I've had, uh, you know, a lot of adults and, you know, college students, older teens, you know, read the series. And even my adult readers, you know, are oftentimes fooled. Like uh, many of the, the adults who've read book five have told me they thought they knew who the murderer was. And then they were surprised, you know, when it was revealed, you know, in the big reveal at the end. Uh, and that's great. That makes me feel good because I, I wrote this book, you know, for teens, um, you know, so in theory, uh, ages 10 and up, really, I've got middle graders from, you know, fourth grade reading the series all the way up through high school and adults, um, you know, but I wanted it to be accessible to all different levels of readers. And so, you know, if I can, if I can fool my adult readers, then I feel like, all right, I've, uh, I've accomplished this, but you should be able to figure out the mysteries. Every every uh, book, you know, has all the clues right in front of you. It's not like um, I reveal something in the last chapter that, okay. you know, like, oh, well, that's you have to wait until the last chapter. few pages or something. Yeah. 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 So you can follow the clues if you really want to put your thinking caps on, um, you know, and you know, yeah, so it is. It's like mystery, but it's also history. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the religious elements are um, not as strong as in my penny book. The, the penny book is very much, you know, um, gets really into the mass and the Eucharist, even though it's done well and organically. There's some very, you know, explicit religious references. The, the Harwood mysteries are a little bit more subdued. There is, you know, religious themes and um, you can see how, you know, my character's faith you know, um, grows throughout the series. Um, but it's, it's definitely more organic, uh, in that series. Yes. It's, it's a gift that you have too, that you're writing for these like different age levels too. So, and I know you're a father of five. So you, you as a father are also familiar with sort of like what a typical, maybe eight year old or 12 year old, like what maybe their interest levels would be. So um, I think that's great that you, you can combine that knowledge of what you've learned through your fatherhood, right? And then also, and then your personal experiences too from your own upbringing, but combining yeah, all those things, the research that you've done and your interests and in history and in your faith, your Catholic faith and how you bring it all together is just incredible. So now you have a personal website too. Can you give us that information for our audience yeah. so that they can go there and learn more about you and your work. Yeah. So like my website is uh, antonycolank.com and that's A-N-T-O-N-Y-K-O-L-E-N-C.com. There's no H in Antony. 
Uh, and uh, that will have everything on there. I have, you know, I'll have my Penny book, my Hardwood Mysteries links, because um, I also have a, a thehardwoodmysteries.com um, separate website just for that series. Um, and then also my, my podcast that you mentioned, The Shepherd's Pie, is really a podcast for all ages. It's not for kids. It, and that really is sort of like you do, uh, but not as good as you do it. Um, you know, it's a, a kind of a faith-based podcast uh, that focuses on, you know, how our faith can help us in what I call our messy lives. And now that you've heard just a little bit about my life, you understand um, there's a lot of messiness in my own life throughout the years. And I think we all kind of, you know, run into that. So I like interviewing people. It's always an interview uh, with somebody like yourself. Uh, we talked about marginalized persons when we had you on the show, which was wonderful. Um, you know, and how our faith can help us reach, you know, marginalized people in our lives. Uh, I've got a few on there from uh, in, in January for the abortion. I, I got an abortion survivor. I've got a woman who had an abortion. So like all sorts of cool stuff. So all of that you can find on the uh, the AntonyColink.com website, in addition to, you know, information about my books and the newest releases and any awards that they get and all that kind of stuff. Yes. Uh, just to backtrack a little bit, I loved being a guest on your podcast. You had me twice. So yes. thank you. I know I sent that out to my own uh, people who follow my website, andesantis.com. And this, this video will also go out to all of them. And maybe they're watching this. So hello to both followers of you and of mine. And I just invite all of them to please do check out your work and go to your website, listen to the podcast. Um, he's just, um, multi-talented. You really are. I mean, with all the work that you're doing and then, um, balancing family life and everything too. Yeah. I was going to say, I thought you were going to say multitasker. That's uh, what my yeah, wife would that say. Too. Yeah. You, yeah. You're both good at, right. You both are probably good at that. <laughs> she likes to tell me that I, I keep too many uh, balls juggled in the air. Um, it's only by the grace of God that they aren't falling all over the place, but I do, uh, I do tend to juggle a lot of different things going on here. Yeah, that's a good thing. And I think as we get older, for all of us, I mean, I'm getting older, you're get, we're all getting older, right? And I do think that, um, you know, keeping our brains active and keeping um, our hobbies and, you know, using our gifts and talents, and you're doing that so well. So yeah, and I should say, yes. um, you know, for, for those who are in your audience who think about, well, I've always wanted to write too, check out the Catholic Writers Guild. Everything mm. I've done in writing has been uh, blessed and basically because of the Catholic Writers Guild. You can find them at like the catholicwriterskill.com. And also, um, you know, for readers or uh, parents and grandparents looking for other good books for teens, check out uh, catholicteenbooks.com. That is another group of Catholic authors that I'm part of. There's like 16 of us. And we're all writing for like middle grade and teen audiences. All of our books are appropriate for Christian, you know, uh, families. And, uh, and there's more out there for our kids than we realize of really good, uh, you know, good books that you can get. You don't have to settle for what the mainstream publishers are, are feeding, you know, our kids these days, which it's, it's getting worse. It's not getting mm -hmm. better. So something like catholicteambooks.com is really a useful site for families of faith. Thank you. And I know that on my, not only on this show, but on the other podcast that I do with uh, Bill Snyder from Patchwork Heart Ministry is that we've interviewed quite a few of those authors from Catholic Teen Books. So thanks for bringing that up too. Yeah. Now, now we're coming. Bill is awesome, by the way. I, I've uh, yeah. been on his show and had him on my show talking about the Shroud of Turin, which was great. Mm. He is awesome. I love working with him. And in fact, Bill helped to get this program off the ground for me when it first started back in 2020. And, you know, we have our Sewing Hope podcast. So go to patchworkheart.org and learn more about Patchwork Heart Ministry. And I thank all of you. Tony, thanks for being a guest on my show. Do you have any final words before we end? You know, just uh, since your show is Journeys of Faith, I think we, uh, it's easy maybe to be patient with ourselves sometimes, but sometimes we're really hard on ourselves. And like I said, you know, we, my journey has not been um, the perfect journey. And even now, you know, I, I'm always amazed at how I can screw things up. And, uh, 
And I feel like, thank God that we we have a God who is forgiving and loves us and is willing to take us back and um, and wants to be that you know son, uh, father to the prodigal son. So I just would just encourage you know your your viewers when they go off the track, just like all of us do. To remember that they're not alone and that god is always there to you know receive them back and to increase their faith and i've learned a lot from my screw-ups um and my faith has grown a lot because of that so i would just encourage them to do the same thank you so much for your words of wisdom i couldn't agree with you more that we have a loving and forgiving god and thank god for the present moment right and for his grace so that we can continue on the journey in full faith, hope, and love. Thank you so much again for being a guest on my show. Thank you, Anne. It's been a pleasure. And we'll see all of you here. We are the first and third Friday of every month on the Anne DeSantis YouTube channel at 8.30. Of course, you can watch anytime you want, but if you would subscribe, I would appreciate it. God bless, and we'll see you next time.